Hi everybody, so I am actually recording a video today, just an impromptu video because originally I was going to write out this whole blog post about goal setting and using Evernote and Todoist, but I just figured it would be best to just show you how I'm going to use it for my goal setting next year. So if you've been following along on my blog, I'm working on a goal setting series and you can see what I've written so far at blog.cocreativecartel.com. It all started with a year in review um, and I talked about looking back before looking forward and I firmly believe that you need to see how far you've come so that you can plan for where you want to go. And I also discussed my 2017 workflow including how I used Evernote and Todoist this past year. So in this video, I'm going to share how I'm going to take my productivity game up another level in both of these apps because these two apps have really changed the way I do business and the way that I organize my life. And I just want to share that with everyone and hopefully let it um, be useful for you. So starting with Evernote. In my last blog post, I shared my personal and professional goals for 2018, and I'll put a link in the description below if you want to see what my 2018 goals are. Um, I set my goals in a very broad manner, and I'm not really specific. And um, this could be a bad thing if you don't break these goals down into actionable tasks. Um, but I won't get ahead of, my, ahead of myself. That is what Evernote and Todoist help me do. It helps break down these very broad and general goals that I have for the entire year. It helps break it down into month, monthly, weekly, and daily tasks. So if you've seen my Evernote videos, you'll know that I use it for long-term goal planning and organizing. So I'm going to open up my Evernote now and I just want to briefly recap how I use my Evernote and how I set it up. So if you want to see any of my setup videos on how I set up my Evernote and Todoist accounts, I'll also link those videos into the description so that it's easy for you to find. But to briefly recap, I have an inbox right here which is basically my default notebook. So if I use Evernote Web Clipper or if I forward an email to Evernote, everything gets dumped into this inbox and on a weekly basis I organize all the notes in here into all the notebooks that you see on the left side. And then I have my goals for the year at the top split into different categories. So if I click on 2018 goals, you'll see I have health and fitness, um, a notebook for all my businesses like Ninong's Pastries, Co-Creative Cartel, Real Estate, Good Bad Foodie. I also have um, one for home and one for personal growth. And then for every category, I create a stack of notebooks. Um, I create an admin notebook, a work in progress, and a and a done notebook. And you can see that on this side. I've kind of expanded my Ninong's Pastries notebook. And you can see it has admin, it has a work in progress, and done. Um, this setup worked really well for me this year. So I'm going to continue using it next year. But I'm actually planning on kind of upping my game on what I what I kind of learned about myself and how um, Evernote works for me. So I'm kind of upping that and and using more ways to organize my notes in Evernote so that it's easier for me to find. So the first way I plan on doing that is using the Evernote tagging system. Um, I adopted this tagging system that I found on YouTube um, that a guy named Federico Vitici um, kind of explained. I'm going to try and look for the video, but if you look him up, he um, does great reviews on productivity apps. Uh, I adopted his tagging system, and let me look for it right now so that I can kind of share it with you. So Evernote tagging system. This is basically how he um, organizes his notes. So up here is the tags and you can see um, I have a tag here for Evernote tips. So if you put an at sign um, 
before something, it'll tell you where. So co-creative cartel, real estate, meanongs, that type of thing. If you put a forward slash in front of something, it's what. So for example, this one is forward slash Evernote tips, and then you have slash blog ideas, recipes, that type of thing. And then if you put a colon in front of something, it's who. So for example, if you're um, if you're assigning it to someone else that you collaborate with, um, for example, my assistant Katie and I collaborate on a lot of Evernote notes, um, I put a who tag in front of it so that I know that um, if I tap on their name, they'll be able to they or I will be able to find those notes. And then this one is um, pound sign or hashtag status. So this one is um, hashtag needs reply or hashtag um, work on this week or whatever you want to do. That way you can figure out what the status is on certain projects. So it could be hashtag finished, hashtag done, or hashtag uh, beginning phases or phase one or something like that. So I really like this tagging system. It's made it really easy for me to find things, but I don't do the tagging on all of my notes and I need to be better about doing that. So I am going to start doing it as soon as possible. And the reason being, like if you look at my notes, um, I have a ton. I have so many notes. Like you can see here, I've really been using Evernote a lot this past year and it's just so hard for me to find things nowadays in Evernote so I really want to use the tagging system so that it's easier for me to find things. And then the other way that I plan on upping my Evernote game is I've decided to create a table of contents in each notebook. So for example, I have a work in progress notebook underneath um, my Ninong's business and it's I put a one in front of it so that it's at the very top and then it has links to all the things that are kind of in this notebook so it depends on what it is but for example this is our new Ninong's location that's opening up so anything that has to do with that is under this category any projects that I have going on any upcoming events um, meeting notes all kinds of stuff but it's all in one place so that I can tap on this note whether I'm on my phone or on my laptop or on my iPad and it's easier for me to find documents very quickly okay so um, let's go into Todoist now so if you remember Todoist is where I keep track of my daily and weekly goals so I take what I have as far as long-term goals from Evernote and then I put them into Todoist so that I can make them into more manageable tasks. This past year I utilized two main methods to keep my tasks in the forefront and that was um, projects which is this tab right here and um, and the today view. So if I click on today it'll basically show me all the things that I have to get done um, for the day and it just really worked well for me because because of all the businesses and projects that I that I have on my plate uh, sometimes it's just really hard to see for example seven days in advance when I have 30 things that I need to get done so I really worked hard on assigning tasks this year with due dates and assigning them to certain projects um, that being said, Todoist has made it really easy for me to categorize and prioritize my tasks since it organizes as I type. So for example, I have to record my podcast and so if I type record podcast, it'll start learning the things that I need to do. So it highlights in blue. Um, if I put a hashtag and I start, I started typing CO, it knows that it goes into this co-creative cartel category. And then it'll set a due date like today or um, I can say every day. And then it'll create a recurring task for me. And those smart, um, smart codes or smart short codes have really, really helped me prioritize. Because if I have to go in and do it later, and you know drag and drop things into folders I honestly won't get it done because it I work 
too fast and I always say I'm going to do it later and I never do. So let me hit cancel on this. So this year I want to actually start you I want to start to use labels in Todoist which I don't I don't use for uh this is a different tab from projects so there's labels and filters that you can that you can utilize but I want to start using labels because um a lot of things happen by event for my particular business um I have real estate clients, so sometimes it happens by client, sometimes it happens by event, and sometimes if I'm in the today view, it's just really hard to see. Um, it's basically a dump of all the categories. As you can see here, there's co-creative cartel, there's home, there's good, bad foodie, um, there's all kinds of stuff, but if, I, if I'm able to go into labels, for example, I can just click on a specific event. For example, Ninong's has a grand opening event coming up on January 7th, and if I put Ninong's grand opening, I can just click on that, and I can see what still needs to get done uh, for that particular event. And uh, that's what I'm really going to try to do in the next upcoming year in 2018, is organize by event and project. So to give you an example of how I plan to use both apps for goal setting, let's do a real life example. So let's pick a goal in my 2018 goals. Let's make it Ninong's. And um, so I'm going to, I went into my 2018 goals and I picked my Ninong's note and let's make it um, start to wholesale pastries and Barocco coffee. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into work in progress and into my table of contents and here it is. It's in it's under goals and I like to put goals at the very top of my table of contents so that it's one of the first things that I look at every time I open this page up and I open this page up on a daily or weekly basis. And then underneath it, I'm going to put a checkbox and I'm going to put wholesale pastries and coffee. This is my broad sense of the goal. So this is what I want to accomplish by the end of the year basically. And so I know that to do this I have to first create pricing. So I have to create coffee pricing which I have already done as you can see there's a note for it already and then I have to also do pastry pricing. So once I put that into um, into Evernote then what I do is I go into Todoist. So from here, I'll click on Todoist. If I'm in the Today view, let's just say, if I hit the, if I hit A on my keyboard, it'll automatically open up a new task. And then I, I'm just gonna type in, uh, let's see, cost analysis for pastry. And then I'm gonna put a due date um, I'll say Monday and then see how it already turned blue that means it's gonna set a due date automatically for you and then if I put, if I put hashtag and I start typing Ninongs it'll already categorize it and then I hit add task and then if you see in the next seven days you'll see tomorrow is Monday it put it in my cost analysis for pastry so that's how I basically do it. I look at my goals notebook at the end of every month also to make sure I'm making strides every month toward my long-term goal. Uh, so um, if it's you know the last week of December or the last week of whatever month I'm in, I look at my table of contents and make sure that some of these things are checked off. Um, if not, then I have the next week to try and do what I can to make strides or I can plan at the end of the month for the following month so that I can make sure I do more or I plan to do more um, to achieve my long-term goals. So I just want to thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I hope this is really helpful. I'm not sure if it is, but I just thought I'd share because 
like I said, Evernote and Todoist have really changed the way that I do business and the way that I stay productive. Um, if you want to see more of my content or more about my goal setting uh, series, you can go to my blog at blog.cocreativecartel.com. You can see what my everyday life looks like on Instagram and Twitter at JustKissa. Until the next one, I wish you success and blessings from one entrepreneur to another. Take care. Bye.